it's finally time to wrap up our Fractal Explorer by adding one last feature. And that would be panning around in our Fractal. So adding some keyboard events so that we can move around and explore our Fractal. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add some keystroke events. So in the Fractal Explorer constructor, say canvas dot add keystroke events. Now go to the canvas class and anywhere you want, add a new method and call it add keystroke events. So we're going to define our keystrokes using the letters on our keyboard W A S D. So let's do that. We can, let's create some keystroke objects. Okay, so keystroke um, W key equals keystroke dot get keystroke key event dot VK underscore W So we created our keystroke objects. Um, the way we did this was calling a static method on our keystroke object called get keystroke, and we specified which letter we want using these static fields. So vk underscore w corresponds to the w key. vk underscore s corresponds to the s key. This last this last argument we don't need to worry about. Now, we need to create actions for when our keys are pressed. And those are defined using the action class, or rather, action interface. So, so we create an action for W by saying, by giving it a name, I'm going to say w pressed equals new abstract action, which is a sub interface of an action listener. So it has the method at override oh, at override public void action performed, and this is the method that gets called when an action needs to be performed, uh, in our case, when pressing a key. And it takes uh, as a parameter an action event E, which we're not going to care for. And in here, we're going to define the action we want performed when we press the W key, which is just move up which we will create later. So let's do the same for our remaining keys. Now that we have created the actions for those keys, we still need to map them. Um, and I almost forgot we need to put a semicolon at the end of each of these like that. Now to actually map the key to the event. This is what we're going to do. So we're going to say this dot get input map dot put. And we're putting uh, our key inside a map. So the W key, I'm going to map this to W key or Actually, just so that there's no confusion, W underscore key, because they're not the same thing. Now I'm going to do this for each of the keys. So W, A, S, D, W, A, S, D, like that. And we need to do one more thing. 
it's going to be dot get action map put and we can do the exact opposite of what we just did so w key and then we tell it which action we want used so that would be w press for the w key and asd asd i know it seems kind of redundant and it is um, but this is how you have to do it just to recap we we got our keystrokes, so which keys are going to be pressed. We define some actions for those keys by specifying a method within each of them that's going to get called when that key is pressed. Then mapping the action to the key is what we're doing right here. So we're saying which key, then we're giving it a string uh, to identify it. Then we're using that identifier string to map that to the action. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is actually create these methods, move up, move left, move down, and so on. And that we can do in the Fractal Explorer class. Let's start by creating the move up method. So that would be private void move up. And the way we're going to move up is we're going to get the current height of where we are zoomed into our fractal. So if we're zoomed in, say, 1,000 times, the height of our screen or view area in the complex plane is a lot smaller than it was originally when we were zoomed out. So to do that, we can create a new variable called current height. And the way this works is it's going to be the original height divided by whatever our zoom factor was. So that's the current height of where we are inside the fractal. And if we want to move up, we can move top left y and then say plus equals the current height. And we know current height is uh, our viewing area. So if we want to move say one sixth of the height up, we can just divide by six. Uh, so six is completely arbitrary. If you wanted to move um, one third of the, the way up or half the screen up, um, then you could also do that. But I like one sixth, so you can still determine where you are before you panned around. And one last important thing is making sure you call update fractal. So copy move up and now put move down, but make sure you put minus equals instead of plus equals. And we can copy most of this code for, say, move left, except that move left deals with width instead of height. So change that to width. And we will also want x here instead of y. Similarly, copy and paste this for, for the right. And put plus equals. And I believe that's all we need. Let's give this a go. And apparently we have no mistakes while compiling. Strange, I had to run that twice. Perhaps the canvas just didn't want to load. But now if we press A or D, W or S, you can see we're actually moving around in 
uh, refractal. And if we zoom in, we can also simply uh, pan around. So guys, we've finally done it. We finally created our fractal zoomer. Um, I've created or actually collected a series of pictures I generated um, using our programs, which I will show you guys shortly. But if you'd like to send me some screenshots of some amazing fractals pictures you have taken, uh, please do so. I'll try to post them on uh, the GitHub repo for everyone else to see. So guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, I hope you learned something and hopefully I'll see you soon.